Station, this is Houston on Space to Ground 2. Are you ready for the event? Houston Station, we are ready for the event. ESA, Ezrin, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Call station for a voice check. Station, this is Isa here at Ezrin in Rome. How do you hear me? Isa Ezrin uh, Station, read you loud and clear. How me? Okay. Allora, possiamo passare all'italiano. I cannot Paolo. hear Isa right now. E, um, abbiamo qui una sala piena di uh, rappresentanti di stampa. Sono uh, otto. Eh, che non sono tantissimi ma hanno tutte le domande molto interessanti quindi direi di cominciare subito con la prima se sei pronto Buongiorno Massimo, buon pomeriggio Good day Massimo, good afternoon to everyone Benissimo, sono pronto per le domande I'm ready for questions, let's begin Benissimo, uh, quindi well. abbiamo la so, domanda da Enrica Battifoglia dell'Anza. First question from Anza, from Enrica Battifoglia. Ciao Paolo. Hi Paolo. Mi trovo benissimo. You look good. Oggi è il 4 aprile. Today is April 4th. In two days, it will be the 6th, an important day for you. So best wishes to you. So I wanted to ask you how you're going to spend your birthday. Enrica, buongiorno. Enrica, good day. It's a pleasure to hear from you. So April 6th is my birthday in a couple of days. It will be a working day as the majority of the uh, April 6th of the last few years have been maybe maybe the one, I, the one I remember a little more is when I turned 40 I was with my parents in Florida for a strange coincidence so here on the station it will be a pretty intense day because that night will be docking the next Soyuz that's bringing the next three members of the crew so substantially will be up all day, all night, until the next day at 9 a.m., until finally we'll have a little bit of time to rest. So a good work day for uh, April 6th, just to do something different. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Paolo. So now we go to uh, Marta Meli of Sky News. Hi, Paolo. We've never spoken before. Happy birthday from all the viewers of Sky News 24. I wanted to ask you about another anniversary, April 12th. What do you think about being so close to Yuri Gagarin's dream, and, and what do you think about your dreams as you approach the end of your mission? Marta, we, we don't know each other, but, but I know that you at Sky are covering the mission, so I thank you for presenting to everyone what we're doing up here. April 12th is definitely an important date for us, but also for all of humanity because it represents a date, something that happened 50 years ago with Yuri Gagarin, the, the first human to go outside of the atmosphere, the first human being to leave the atmosphere, who demonstrated the possibility of being able to do this thing that was completely impossible up till then. So we'll be, celebrate, we'll be celebrating this event up here with a series of activities that we call of public relations, but their activities of contact with the public, with people in Russia. In Russia, it's, it's a great celebration, but also in, in many parts of the world. And so we're trying to relive this thing that was born, that Yuri Gagarin brought to orbit. So we, we're trying to show that this, this dream has been realized and continued, and we went from being in, on orbit and being able to stay only about 100 minutes to being on orbit the way we are now, six months or more.
and basically working in space. So this has become a house for, for now for a few people, but I hope in the future for more and more. But I hope everyone's going to have the opportunity to see the Earth from up here. It's beautiful. And you can feel this uh, feeling of being without gravity. Um, the next question is from Claudia Laporta from Space Television. Good day, Paolo. This is Claudia Laporta from Space TV Network, dedicated to space. We have met a couple of times. So, happy birthday from all our staff, and we follow you every day. So, congratulations for what you've been doing. We have a little bit of a technical question. Since it's been five months since your important mission has begun, and you've had many links with Earth, you have opened a new frontier of communication between humanity and those who live in space. So all this enthusiasm that you've, that you've generated by sharing this with the public, in your case, the questions that you have received are, are more, are they more trivial or are they more technical by people who are really interested in space? Well, Claudia, actually, there has been a lot of interest in the mission, I think also because of this new uh, use of social networking, and I'm talking about Twitter and other forms of communication, the uh, ability to be able to send photos. But we're also doing a lot of work uh, regarding communicating with uh, schools, with radios. This morning we've, uh, we've done a linkage with a school in Luca. So we're trying on one hand to do a technical work to complete experiments up here, but also to utilize this as as a platform to show people, and especially our young people, that you can work, you can put effort towards such a strange area um, that's sometimes considered a little intimidating, like science and, and technology. These are examples that are, that are not very developed in our media and in our culture of every day that we see on TV. So, so this is, I always say that this is not my mission. This is a mission of the European Space Agency that continuously works on orbit even when there isn't an astronaut on board. This, this Columbus lab is, is utilized by other astronauts that are conducting experiments for the European Space Agency. So it's, it's, it's a lab that's at our disposal. So the idea that it's known that this lab is here and the ability to use it is very important. So the fact that young people are able to see that going to school and studying and learning new things is, is worth not just to fill out a piece of paper, but also you can uh, work towards something important. So this is also an objective of my mission. If I'll be able to, if, if, I, if I'm able to inspire even a few people with, with the uh, pictures that I've been sending on Twitter and Flickr, I'm sure this will be uh, an important thing for the future. When, when these people will be able to enter the workforce in our society. Paolo, thank you. I had no doubt that this uh, question would have uh, inspired you, so we're going to have to uh, shorten the rest. This is Massimo Malpelo from the uh, National Newspaper. Hi, Paolo. This is the first time we speak. Greetings from the QN, the uh, National News. We follow you through the Arresto del Carlino, Nazione El Giorno, and uh, Quotidiano.net, one of our portals. A question on uh, medical research. Inside the space station, we study new solutions to 
improve quality of life and cure diseases. Can you talk about an experiment that is being uh, conducted in the absence of gravity that's particularly interesting? Well, we conduct so many that it's pretty hard isolate to isolate one. And on the other hand, and in the end, I, I'm not a scientist, I'm an operator that's conducting these experiments. So I can I can tell you some that I find intriguing, and there, there are a couple of these. There, there was one that they used to measure, they used to measure my brain waves to understand how the brain behaves once we get here in absence of gravity and we have to face a new environment. So there, there's an adaptation process that's similar to people who have accidents and, and lose the ability to use a part of, uh, of their body or they have a stroke. Another one that I just did this morning, it's a study on the perception of three dimensions in absence of, of gravity. So once you've removed the uh, force of gravity, your depth perception changes. And so you study how the brain perceives depth and how that changes. So this is very interesting, and I think that these experiments will give very interesting results that will be able to be applied to all of us in the future. So we only have a few minutes. Claudio Di Giorgio. Hi, Paolo. But can you tell me what that is that you're playing with? This, this beautiful object. Here it is. You've been touched by the ATV. Here's my question. So you're in the final part of your mission. Do you already feel like talking about a psychological effect, how it went? Um, you've, you've remained at three people on station for a little longer. Uh, than expected. So how did that go psychologically? Well, I would say that it went very well, so there haven't been big problems. I don't feel like four months or three and a half months have already gone by. It's fine. Work is really intense. Work fly, time flies by. And in fact, there's, there's little time to do what we want to do. So uh, the relationship with the other crew members are are pretty good. Uh, they're a little bit divided. The uh, the Russians tend to be on their side, and we are on our side. But this is this is a, a practical thing that they're doing experiments on, on their side, and they sleep there. So in general, it's fine. So this shows us how the body is flexible, how you can work and get used used to these conditions, these sort of strange and restrictive conditions. But as, as far as I'm concerned, I'm, I'm fine. So surely all the preparation that we've done in these past few years has been very important. On one hand, to be able to meet our colleagues and to understand what the pros and cons are for each one, and also to know physically and, and, and psychologically that we're able to sustain this uh, arrangement. Paolo, we have to keep on. Francesco Vota from TG1. So to come back to Earth real quick, in what way has the uh, earthquake in Japan affected you and the research that you're conducting on in the lab? Well, the uh, earthquake and the tsunami have had a direct impact because one morning we have called the uh, mission control in Japan and no one responded. A few minutes later, Houston came on and told us that the uh, center had been evacuated and this because of the earthquake and the tsunami. So following that, it was a little chaotic on Earth. But Houston uh, came in to sub and things uh, kept going normally. So they've asked us several times to take photos and to look at, and we, we try to look down. But from here, we're so far up 
to see these important, horrifying things. They're so minute. It's almost like looking through a microscope. And so it's, you can only see a little bit of that. From, from the psychological point of view, I, I'm really saddened for my Japanese colleagues and, and all the Japanese people. And, but but in, in a way, this is part of life, too, that we have to deal with. Very well. Uh, we feel better that these uh, calls always get longer and longer. So a question from uh, Giovanni Caprara from uh, Corriere della Sera. How has your idea of Earth changed f after seeing it rotate under your feet for four months? Well, you know, it's interesting. Everyone thinks that I'm always at the cupola watching, but some days we don't even go through the, the cupola for a variety of reasons. Every once in a while I'm passing by and looking. And initially, I could never understand where we were, but just now, at a, at a glance now, I'm able to see and understand where we are in spot cities. So, so it's interesting how you can have this global view. And it's also interesting to see how you're going from winter to, to summer in a few minutes and from desert to ocean, from Central America with these huge forests. Earth is always beautiful. From this point of view, it has not changed. It's always beautiful. Beautiful. It's always fragile. I was able with uh, some pretty potent zooms to be able to see some details, and 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 we're definitely having an impact on it. So we need to be more and more careful. Paolo, one more question from Radio 3 Science. Hi, Paolo. Have you, have you ever tried to think about what it was like to be Gagarin, to think what his sensations must have felt? Is the vertigo of looking down on Earth from up there the same? What do you think? Well... Gagarin and all those who have built that vehicle, who decided to put him on there, they had a lot of courage because even, even now going to space is a little bit dangerous. But for the first time back then with these vehicles built well for the time, but still a little bit rudimentary for, for compared to what we do now and, and going towards the unknown. So, so really going towards a place that no one had ever gone before must have been a very, very strong feeling. Very strong, very intense feeling. Gagarin is surely a person who opened a page of history and we must pay homage to him. Very well. We even have an extra question. Claudia Di Giorgio. What do you miss the most? Claudio, I, I miss seeing you, talking to you, being with you, joking, being out drinking something. So I, I miss a little bit the social contact. I miss fresh food, smelling and, uh, and tasting. So the other day I was working near one of these uh, equipments and, and I thought, oh, maybe it's an ant. And then I realized, oh, wait, that can't be an ant. And so I looked and it was a, a small little crumb of food that was flying around. So I miss these things, these things that are normal. But on the other hand, I, I'm having a great time. So this, this whole deal of uh, the weightlessness is very interesting. It's, it's exhilarating and definitely seeing the earth, taking pictures, sending them down, seeing uh, comments from people amuses me and, and I like that. Well, losing weight, I'm sure, is uh, something many of us want. So this is the end of our uh, 
press conference, so you've been good to us as usual, and I hope we can uh, get together soon. Yes, the uh, activities here are pretty complex and uh, pretty tight schedule, so I thank uh, everyone for going to Ezrin today for this uh, event. So thank you for uh, talking and writing about us. I'm uh, expecting my colleagues so that uh, we can have a bigger crew. And I'm also expecting, looking forward to the arrival of uh, the next shuttle towards the end of the month. And naturally, and, and the addition of the AMS, so a, a, a scientific instrumentation, and the arrival of the other astronauts, including Roberto. So we can have another uh, Italian reunion that doesn't happen every day. So we'll see if this too will be able to attract more attention from people so that we can uh, go forward even more. Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes the event. Thank you, Issa Ezrin. I appreciate it. Thank you. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications. <laughs>